Hi, Founder fans. Jason here. Today's founder is Robert Hansen Harrison, George Washington's personal secretary during the first half of the Revolutionary War. Now, Robert Hansen Harrison came from a middling family in Maryland, but after he got his law degree, he actually spent some time in Fairfax, Virginia, where certain members of George Washington's family lived, and this is where Washington met the much younger man and first became friends with him. Hansen actually represented Washington on several legal issues leading up to the Revolutionary War. Now, once the war breaks out, Hansen does join the uh, army, and he is pretty quickly appointed as an aide-de-camp to George Washington. Now, when we talk about George Washington's family, as it's known, they're mostly younger men, late teens, early 20s, who look up to Washington as a father figure and who he can command around. Now, when Hansen joins the army, he's already 30 years old, which isn't necessarily old, but it is more senior uh, than most of the aides-de-camp that served directly under George Washington. Now, Hansen becomes Washington's personal secretary, and in this position, he is overseeing much of George Washington's correspondence. Uh, he is always by Washington's side when they take to the battlefield. Uh, it's noted very frequently that he is often at George Washington's side. He also works with Alexander Hamilton uh, in, in being in charge of most of the prisoner exchanges during the Revolutionary War, especially the higher profile prisoner exchanges. Now, Robert Hanson Harrison unfortunately falls ill during the war. He has frequent bouts of some kind of sickness that we're not sure what. Uh, I will note another aide-de-camp, Tench Tillman, I did read him complaining that Robert Hanson Harrison uh, often was too ill to help write, which gave Tench Tillman double the workload. But we don't want to take that away from Harrison. He worked very hard when he was able to. We will get back to that illness, though. For now, uh, it's suffice to say he's with George Washington for the first half of the war, and he's such an important member of the team as the personal secretary that I've seen him called in multiple places the chief of staff of the Continental Army. Now, this is not an official title from the time. It's a modern title that we throw back at him. But the chief of staff now for the president of the United States is the one who oversees the entire operation, does probably, if TV is to be believed, 90% of the work of being president of the United States. Robert Hanson Harrison carried out these extraordinarily important tasks of administering an army on behalf of George Washington. Uh, his efforts were extremely great. Unfortunately, uh, about in the 17, I think it was 1780, his father passes away, leaving his family's middling fortune in dire straits. And Harrison is forced to resign from the Continental Army to go take care of not just his family's estate, but his children. He had three daughters and his wife had passed away years beforehand, so his family needed him. And he did, after five years of service, have to resign from the Continental Army. Now this, uh, he goes back to Maryland. I know I said he had lived in Virginia for a few years. Uh, he was Maryland born. He owned property in Maryland, so he goes back to Maryland. And he is almost immediately chosen as Chief Justice of the state of Maryland, the uh, Chief Justice of the Maryland Supreme Court, like right when he gets home. He holds this position for about a decade, actually, and then he is, well, the Constitution comes around, and when the Constitution comes around, there's a vote for president. George Washington famously uh, wins that first presidential election. He receives, I believe there were 68 people who voted as electors. George Washington gets 68 of them. Uh, John Adams comes in second and becomes vice president. Uh, at the time, whoever got the second most amount of votes became vice president. Uh, whoever got less than that wasn't. Now, John Adams becomes vice president. The person who got the third most amount of votes was John Jay. The person who got the fourth most amount of votes, technically, to be president for the first time in American history was Robert Hanson Harrison. Now, as I said, every elector had two votes one they gave to Washington, he was the first president, and the second went to the person they thought should be vice president for the first time. Now, I don't want to overhype this. Uh, Robert Hanson Harrison got six votes. John Jay got nine, and John Adams got 34 or something like that. So John Adams was the clear winner for vice president, but it is extraordinarily noteworthy to look at Robert, Harrison, Robert Hanson Harrison and see that, well, he was George Washington's number one guy throughout most of the war, why shouldn't he be his number one guy when we start this new nation? And when I say number one guy, what I mean is number two. The Broadway musical Hamilton has made it very popular that Hamilton was George Washington's right-hand man. And while there's a lot of truth to that relationship, 
The fact of the matter is, during the Revolutionary War, Robert Hanson Harrison was George Washington's right-hand man. And that's one of the reasons he got a handful of votes to be the first vice president, to continue as Washington's right-hand man. Now, he loses this, but as soon as Washington becomes president, he starts nominating people to take over the Supreme Court. Robert Hanson Harrison is chosen for and confirmed by the Senate to be an inaugural member of the United States Supreme Court. Hansen tries to turn this down. I had mentioned earlier, he had suffered from ill health most of his life, and he thought he was just too ill to take up the position. George Washington was convinced by friends to do something he otherwise would not have done. Washington wrote a personal letter to Han Harrison, asking him specifically to come take over this position. We need your legal mind next to John Jay to make sure this new nation's judicial department is created appropriately. Harrison actually gives in to this demand, or I guess inquiry, uh, and gets on, gets in his carriage and starts making his way from Maryland to New York City. And he only gets a few miles before he turns back. And he just does not think his health could survive the arduous journey to New York. And sadly, this is true. Robert Hanson Harrison dies just about four months later from this lingering illness he had for years at just 45 years old. Some man who had served alongside George Washington, a person who was expected to be an inaugural member of the United States Supreme Court. And sadly, his Ill, uh, Ill health took him away at a pretty young age. So that's the story of Robert Hanson Harrison. It's, it's a little kind of a bummer at the end there, but he's an extremely important member of this initial generation of Americans. Not only his work in the war, but the idea that his legal mind was so respected that he would immediately be chosen as Chief Justice of the State Supreme Court when available at a time before the Constitution when the state courts were the highest courts in the land. And he was given votes to be first Vice President of the United States, and he was approved to be an inaugural member of the United States Supreme Court. Uh, unfortunately today, you just don't hear his name ever. And when you do hear the name Harrison, you usually think of Benjamin Harrison or William Henry Harrison, a.k.a. Tippy Canoe. I don't believe they're related. I did look into it a little bit. Uh, I do not find any relation, though I'm sure if you trace the names back to Europe, you would find some kind of connection there. Again, that's Robert Hanson Harrison. My name's Jason. This is Founder of the Day. Thank you for watching. Excuse me. If you enjoyed this video, hit like. If you're new here, subscribe. I put out videos seven days a week. And I'll be back with another Founder for you tomorrow.